Hello, this is Dr. Lori. Welcome to this additional discussion on the chi-square test of independence and Fisher exact test. So in other videos, we've talked about the chi-square test of independence specifically as it is a two by two table and how it can also be used to test things. That same two by two table can be used to calculate odds ratios or risk ratios, that sort of thing. What I'd like to do is expand that two by two table concept um, to include even more um, types of variables. So instead of requiring the variables to be dichotomous, the chi-square test of independence is actually quite flexible and can accommodate um, variables that have more than two categories. So in this particular example, what we're looking at is we're looking at whether there's a relationship between a person's blood group, A, B, I'll start over, blood group A, blood group B, blood group both AB, and blood group O, which is neither A nor B. And so um, we want to see if there's some relationship between their blood group and how much they improve in their um, uh, medical clinical improvement. And it could be that they improve none, or slight, or moderate, or great. And so what we end up is we end up with a 4 by 4 table, which has 16 cells in it. And so you can see here that any given person could fall in any one of those cells. Um, we would have to test their blood group to find out what row they fall in, and then we would need to follow them and find out how much they improved over time. And so um, somebody who's, say, group blood group B, who had slight improvement, would fall into this cell right here. Somebody who was group O, who had great improvement, would fall here, and so forth. A, B, that had no improvement. And so we would fill all of those cells in um, over time as we collect more and more people into our study. So the purpose of me showing you this example is not to actually do the calculation um, because the computer will do that for us. You already know how to use SPSS to calculate a chi-square test of independence. But rather to show you that it's possible to have variables in this chi-square test of independence that are not necessarily dichotomous. And so this is just one example of that. The other thing that I would like to remind you of is this notion of testing the or calculating the degrees of freedom. Now, for some reason, um, statisticians get really excited about degrees of freedom. And so they might ask, so how many degrees of freedom does this particular um, table have? And a good way of figuring that out, we know that this is four cells wide and four cells tall. Um, one thing I like to do is if I have this as a sheet of paper, I would actually cover this up with my hands, but I will show you with highlighting. I cover up one column, and then I cover up, so you're imagining me covering these up with my hands, I cover up one row, and then I can count the number of cells that are left. And so here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cells. So I have nine degrees of freedom. And if you remember, degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So if you're into memorizing equations, then both of those will give you the same answer. The number of rows is four. So four minus one is three. The number of columns is also 4, so 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So either way, um, we have calculated the degrees of freedom. And you can do this with any number. You can do it with a 3 by 5 table or a 10 by 20 table. You just take the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. The other thing that I'd like to talk about a little bit, and I don't have an illustration for this, but rather um, just the concept of it. When we do have a two by two table, sometimes when we're doing the chi-square test of independence, the assumption of that test is not met. And as a reminder, the assumption is that each cell should have an expected value, an expected count of 
about five or more. So if I have very few people in my study, I may have some expected counts that are less than five. And at some point, the statistical test, the chi-square test of independence, kind of implodes. It, it doesn't have enough um, data points to support the actual calculation. It's very unstable. And in that case, when I have a two by two table, I can do something that's called the Fisher exact test. Now it's very computation intensive. And so we limit it to this example where we have only the, um, the two by two table and we only have small expected numbers. You can see the actual equation for that in your Jekyll textbook if you're interested. Um, and I would suggest reading that very short section that describes the Fisher exact test in some of the situations, but it's essentially identical to the chi-square test of independence when we have a two by two table. So um, those are two kind of expansions of the chi-square test of independence that we've seen in the past. First of all, we can have more than two rows and more than two columns. And also, if we have the assumption that isn't met, we can use a Fisher exact test. Thank you for joining me for this discussion.